Hey friends, Cloudbright here. Time for another one minute identity and access management lesson. With all these different types of policies and attachment locations for those security uh, resources, it's important for us to understand not just how statements get evaluated, but how the different policies work together in a hierarchy. Previously, you heard me talk about the important power of the explicit deny, the explicit allow, and then the implied deny, and how all of those work together to control permissions within a policy or across multiple different policies where those statements might conflict with one another. And so when we consider the larger picture, AWS is still always going to start by looking at every policy and saying, was there a deny, an explicit deny somewhere within? Okay, pretty straightforward. We've talked about that some in previous lessons. But as we get into the actual look for and allow part of this process, it gets a little more complex than what I may have alluded to previously. And that's because there's a lot of different types of policies that we could be looking at. So moving on down in, the first place that we will go and look for and allow, and we're going to be asking ourselves if it was allowed, would be, are there any organizational service control policies that might be affecting this particular set of permissions? An organizational service control policy is a way of limiting permissions or granting certain actions at the organizational OU level. This is a bigger topic that we'll leave for later on, but keep in mind that the organization is evaluated here as well. Moving on down in, we look for resource-based permissions. So this could be on the bucket, on the topic, uh, whatever it is the resource that you're accessing. If it has a policy attached to it, they'll check there next to see whether or not there are any allows. Okay, keeping in mind that as we go through this process here, you might be building up a larger composite set of permissions that are gonna be given for this particular scenario. Moving on down past the resource, we get into permissions boundaries. Now, <laughs> this is a tricky one and we are gonna talk about this a lot more in a later lesson, but a permissions boundary is basically an add-on policy that you attach to an entity that limits what other permissions they might be able to have granted. This is basically a nice safeguard that prevents uh, users from accidentally having additional permissions granted in an unforeseen situation. And again, more on that coming up in future lessons. Moving on down in, the next set would be session permissions. Now, this is kind of tricky. When you go to assume a role or do a federated identity, you can grant a specific or limited set of permissions when they assume that role. So they're pointing out that now, after going through all those other resource or other policies, they would go and evaluate whether or not there's an allow statement in the session itself. Now this is gonna be unique based on only federated or role style permission scenarios, so kind of keep that in mind. The very last one on here would be to look to see whether or not there are any identity policies that might need to have those permissions evaluated on them. So in the end, friends, the explicit deny starts the process, and then they're gonna look for, in this particular order, allow statements across all of those other policies, keeping in mind that that builds up that composite permission set. And then finally, at the very end, you would have your implicit deny if you strike out <laughs> in all of those other areas. Nothing was explicitly denied and nothing was allowed, so that implicit deny catch-all would happen at the bottom. So just to kind of keep this in mind, friends, remember how all of these pieces work together, statements being evaluated within policies, policies being evaluated holistically based on the context of the call. See you next time.